Welcome to Conquering Commas, a video series that's going to really help you use commas. Let's face facts, this is probably the peskiest punctuation that is out there. And they're not easy to use, and so many people use commas incorrectly. I think that by the end of this series, by practicing some of these lessons, you're going to get really good at using commas. Unfortunately, one of the things that's going to also happen is that you are going to start seeing comma errors in the world around you. I cannot prevent that. I can only encourage you and let you know that really getting on top of this piece of punctuation is going to make your life so much easier. Our first comma rule has to do with a series. This is probably the very first comma that you ever learned. Really, a series is just a list of different items. It can be separate nouns, it can be adjectives, it can be phrases. Here's an example. Let's turn that into a series or a list using commas correctly. The zoo in San Diego is known for its pandas, comma, koalas, comma, polar bears, comma, lions, comma, monkeys, comma, and giraffes. One important note, don't put a comma between items in a list if they are separated with coordinating conjunctions like and or or. I'll give you an example of a sentence I'm going to write using coordinating conjunctions instead of commas between each item in the series. The crowded animal shelter has 15 dogs and 13 cats and four hamsters and one ferret. In a sentence like that, as a writer, I'm going to choose to use the and between each item in the series because it layers on the meaning and makes it clear how crowded the animal shelter really is. This is called polysyndeton and it is a great rhetorical device. Here's another very straightforward example. You can see between each item in the series, between each film, we've put a comma. J.J. Abrams directed Star Trek, comma, Super 8, comma, and Star Wars The Force Awakens. But this also works with phrases. Take, for example, the following. People who work in software engineering need to know how to use different computer languages, comma, analyze the needs of the user, comma, design efficient programs, comma, and create customized applications. You can see that this is still a list. It is still a series, even though it's a series of verbs describing what a software engineer does. Do I need a comma before the and? The comma before the and in a list is a serial comma, often called the Oxford comma. Some people say it's optional. If you leave it out, you can change the meaning of the sentence though, so be careful. To be most correct, it's probably safe to include it. Let's say you go to the movies. You want to have a list of the different items that you purchased to eat. We ate popcorn, junior mints, and Twizzlers. Without the comma, the sentence really doesn't change at all. We ate popcorn, junior mints, and Twizzlers. You ate three things. We can tell by looking at them. Newspapers actually eliminated that comma after Junior Mints. They eliminated it because it saved them barrels of ink every year. But sometimes you really need that comma, and so my tendency is to include it. Here is an example where that comma is super important. I ate my favorite sandwich, salad, and lemon meringue pie. Does your favorite sandwich actually consist of salad and lemon meringue pie? Which would be kind of icky together between two pieces of bread, let's face it. But look at the second example, you put that comma in. I ate my favorite sandwich, comma, salad, comma, and lemon meringue pie. Here we have three distinct items, not a bizarre salad pie sandwich.
People tend to get really passionate about the Oxford comma, which is kind of interesting. Vampire Weekend wrote an entire song about it. And if you go onto the internet, you can find some very interesting graphics and memes and kind of hilarious posters about the Oxford comma. Here its omission in this particular sentence makes one wonder about one's parents. My heroes are my parents, Superman and Wonder Woman. The advice from Grammarly.com where this appeared is to use the extra comma and keep it real. It turns out that younger people tend to use the Oxford comma, which is also known as the serial comma. Perhaps it's because in recent years we've become more vehement about the teaching of it. But I also think that the sense-making aspect of it and in our digital age where we're not printing so many documents, it makes a lot of sense. Here is an example of the passion I was speaking of. You can have my Oxford comma when you pry it from my cold, dead, and lifeless hands. Of course, note the comma after dead. Here's a quick review of lesson one. Use commas to separate items in a series. To be super correct, use that comma before the final coordinating conjunction, whether it's and or or. This last comma is called the Oxford comma, and some people get really excited about it. Soon, you will be conquering commas. Thanks for listening to lesson number one.